All right, so this, of course, the big story that we are tracking on fine print tonight. After a gap of nearly 40 long years, an Indian Prime Minister has made a trip to Greece. Now, the Indian Prime Minister landed in Athens early this morning for what is being dubbed as a historic one-day visit. The two nations have decided to elevate their relationship to that of a strategic partnership level. A bilateral meeting between the two Prime Ministers in Athens infused a new momentum to the relationship, especially in areas of defence, security, trade and also emerging technologies. Now, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that both sides had set a target of doubling their bilateral trade by as early as 2030, that is in the next seven years. The two countries have also decided to firm up a migration and a mobility partnership pact soon to facilitate skilled immigration between the two nations. The two leaders also discussed establishing direct flights between Greece and India. An agreement on agricultural production has also been signed and the deal will allow for cooperation in research, animal rearing and animal products. The two countries have also condemned the use of terror proxies for cross-border terrorism. Now, the joint statement emphasized on respect for territorial integrity, sovereignty and the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. Now, remember, Greece is a member of the NATO military alliance and the European Union. It strategically sits on top of the Mediterranean Sea and Athens is more than willing to act as India's gateway into Europe. With enhanced utilization of Europe's largest Perivis port, India could of course boost its trade not only with Greece as, as is being envisaged today, but also with the rest of Europe and indeed with Russia as well. Now the Indo-Greek bilateral trade stands at about 1.4 billion American dollars. Now, India mainly exports aluminium, organic chemicals, fish, iron and steel to Greece amongst other things. Meanwhile, the Greeks' top export to India are minerals, fuel, mineral oils and other products such as sulphur and aluminium foil. The country is now aiming to double their trade in less than seven years. Now, to give us more perspective on this, we're being joined in by Ambassador Dilip Sinha. He's the former Indian ambassador to Greece and also former India's permanent representative to the United Nations. Ambassador Sinha, thank you very much indeed, sir, for speaking to us here on Vyond. And the question that I want to start off with is, you know, this is a crucial visit by the Indian Prime Minister to Greece. Why did it take so long for an Indian Prime Minister to go? Because this is a visit that's happening after four long decades. Yes, thank you for having me. Uh it, it is a mystery why uh, it has taken so long for an Indian Prime Minister to go to Greece. Uh, 40 years is a very long time. Now, Greece is a mid-sized uh, European uh, economy, but uh, Greece has its own uh, importance. It is the largest uh, country in the Balkans. It is the gateway to the Balkans. It is also the closest country to, uh, to India in the European Union. Besides, uh, Greece has uh, a very strong maritime navy. In fact, in terms of dead weight, it is the, the largest merchant navy in the world. Mm -hmm. So although it's, a, it's as I said, it's a mid-sized economy, it's, its merchant navy is extremely strong. And Greece also has a great deal of importance within the European Union because it is a frontline state. A lot of the immigration, the illegal immigration that takes place into Europe takes place through Greece. Uh, so Greece has uh, security concerns. It has a lot of political problems. Uh, right. But uh, in India-Greece relations have been extremely good politically all these years. Mm -hmm. But our economic uh, cooperation never picked up uh, for various reasons. And uh, one of these was that Greece was looking for a lot of investment from foreign companies in its infrastructure, in its ports. And our capacity to invest in these was very limited earlier. Right. Uh, way back 15 years ago, when Greece opened up two of its ports, Piraeus and Thessaloniki, uh, for uh, investment in the container terminals, uh, two Chinese companies bid for them and Absolutely. both won the contract. Eventually, one came through, that was Piraeus. And the Chinese investment led to the rise of Piraeus uh, as an important port in the European Union. In fact, now I think I believe it's the second or the third largest port in the European Union. So Greece was extremely beholden to China for the investment that came in from there. Uh, but over the last few years, as you know, China's economy has been going down. There have been security concerns with Chinese investments. 
and the Chinese investment in Pereira Sport ran into rough weather because there were strikes and there were allegations of uh, labor rights violations and mistreatment of workers. Right. So all these factors have led to the certain disenchantment in Greece with the relationship uh, with China as also in the rest of Europe as well. I think you've comprehensively and, summed up, you know, the relationship that India and Greece have had so far, Ambassador. But, uh, you know, as someone who, who in fact uh, has been India's ambassador to Greece, what do you think in fact stood out in the meeting between the Indian Prime Minister and the Greek Prime Minister today? And what role do you think uh, India can now play in Greece there? Well, from this meeting, we can see two or three things happening. One is that the relationship has been uh, upgraded to a strategic partnership. Now, this is extremely important because this means that uh, strategic areas, defense cooperation will increase. Now, recently, we have had uh, joint exercises in Greece uh, of the Air Force and the Navy. And we expect now some Greek ships to come across to the Indian Ocean for joint exercises here. So that defense cooperation is increasing. This is one. And the other is that uh, the, the two prime ministers, uh, uh, their meeting should give an impetus to the Indian private sector in going across to Greece and investing there. Right. Now, we have one major investment by GMR, which is building a port in Greece. Uh, but we expect some more Indian companies to go in there. And this, uh, this, this visit should give an impetus to that. And also the mobility uh, agreement uh, should give an impetus to Indian workers to go across to Greece. Greece also has a major demographic problem. Uh, right. Its population has actually gone down over the last four years. And uh, there are some Indian, 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 Indians who have settled down there, mainly in the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. But in the high-tech areas, we have not uh, got right. there, nor, nor, nor got there in the investment areas. So one expects that in these two fields, thanks to this agreement that has taken place, right. uh, there should be a boost to India's uh, participation in the Greek economy. Absolutely, indeed. It'll be very interesting to see as to how the relationship, of course, progresses from here. Thank you very much, indeed, Ambassador Sinha, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.